folks. I'm going to, I've just went, uh, decided, you know, what the heck, it's a new year. I'm going to go ahead and uh, work on some live scroll saw patterns, or scroll, <laughs> work on scroll saw patterns live. Uh, being that I'm already two minutes late, I didn't want to wait till I had the camera set up in order to start, but I'm going to do that now. There's nobody on the panel. Anybody wanting to be on the panel is welcome. But I would have to mess with that while setting up the camera. So if y'all want to talk, I got to talk. And <laughs> if you come on the panel, all that, I, all that I ask is we try to keep it on topic. The chat does not have to stay on topic. But that's what we're doing. So let me get the camera set up. And I will show you the pictures where we're going to be working on. Or I wanted to let the audience pick which pictures I work on because what you want is what matters when it comes to this kind of stuff. So, got to get my camera, so forgive the dizziness. Nobody is obligated to come on this panel, but if you would like to, just let me know, and I will have to slightly interrupt the show to send it to you, but these things happen, and that's fine. Now, I have cleaned up my desk a little bit. I know you're looking at an ashtray right now, but I will be able to keep it in frame more often. And I appreciate y'all being here. I know I tend to do these last minute things, but it's just because, you know, I needed a project to do. It's too bloody cold outside to do anything. And I know I'm in Texas and y'all are saying cry me a river. But <coughs> I will zoom in things as we go. Uh, it's uh, below freezing here in Texas. Willie Nelson, that's my wife's favorite country singer. All right, uh, B, well, you're one of the few viewers, so... Uh, You'll have a vote in this. I have more options of Willie than I do the others. I have a few Merle and only one Wayland to choose from. Because most pictures I've already found of good country or good pictures of Wayland I've already done as a scroll saw pattern. So I couldn't find too many of Wayland that I hadn't already done. But I will zoom in. But first thing I need to do is share my screen so that y'all can see which pictures we are going to be working from and again y'all will choose what I do who are the other two uh, there's Merle Haggard and Waylon Jennings uh, let me shrink the screen I was going to cut wall studs for the new shot but it's cold as hell here too I hear you buddy okay here is pictures we have to choose from and I'm not looking at the chat right this second so because i'm sharing the screen now because of how large some of these are i may crop if it's if y'all choose one of these two i will crop it and i'm not going to stop at just one pattern you know people want me to keep going i'll zoom in on these this is the uh, actual size of the photograph so that's one willy we can choose from this one's not quite as big but it's another good willy there's another good Willie. They, these these two are more haggard, and that one's Waylon Jennings. And while I'm here, I will show y'all the lighthouse I had started. This is not the, sh the lighthouse I started on the show. This was the one I showed y'all on the show, but the one I'm working on, I'm going to wait till next Friday's show in order to in order in order to continue that because so many people were told next week is when that will continue, so that will stay accurate. I'm going to offer this as a free pattern only to people watching this show that email me at artistic underscore cowboy 30 at yahoo.com. That way it's proof that you watch the show. This will be a free pattern. It will be on my website. Otherwise, not free. But if you say you watch the show and just send an email to that address saying, I believe my email address is also in the description of this video, just send an email saying free lighthouse pattern and i will send this to you this is it is point cabrillo lighthouse is the source photo and that's the best i could do with that one this is not the one i worked on live on the show so i'm gonna wait for that but i'm gonna give you all a few seconds to look at this and then i will run back to the chat to see who picked what but i will possibly do more than one i have nothing else to do today and i wanted to start out the new year being productive Again, these are all for Willie Nelson. These two are Merle Haggard. That one is Waylon Jennings. Uh, 
whichever one is the most popular pick, I will do first, and then we can go in order. So let me go over to the chat and see where we're at. Uh, okay, the fourth pick of Willie, we have one vote on. Okay, we only have one vote. So let me see which one was the fourth vote. Fourth pick of Willie was this one. Now, little things like this, I'm going to leave out a lot of that because, you know, that's just a needed mess. I mean, I could do that if I was doing this on my own time, but I'm going to probably just go with the typical ponytail with a couple of flat out hairs. So, so far we have one vote for that one, and I won't keep the voting very long because I know the viewers don't want to see a bunch of votes. Uh, so, so, we, so far we got one vote for that, and then we'll choose another one later on in the show. Okay, I'm going to refresh, refresh in case the chat is frozen. And Merlin Waylander, okay, uh, be happy. Do you have any? Okay. Okay, John and Chris Nealon. John Cousins and Chris Nealon have chosen the fourth Willie. Be happy. Do you have one you want to see? Because I can make that the second choice. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, I love classic country, and I, no, I am going to make, I was going to say, I'm, I don't want to brag, but I do want to brag. I probably have the most Willie Nelson scroll saw patterns out there, and here I'll be adding to that. <laughs> I know I have the most John Wayne scroll saw patterns, and I'm pretty confident I have the most uh, Willie Nelson scroll saw patterns. All of these are on Woody, uh, woodenvisions.com, but the ones you see aren't on there yet because I haven't done them yet. That's what the show is for. Okay, so I guess we're going to start with the fourth fourth uh, picture. As far as I know, I'm still screen sharing. So one thing I'm going to do, and y'all will get to see how I try to save ink. I very roughly go around the outline so I don't waste a bunch of black ink. But let me make sure I'm still screen sharing. Yes, I am. Okay. I am unable to see the chat. Well, let me pop out the chat and see if I can do it that way. Pop out, pop out, pop out. No, I did it wrong. Pop out chat. Okay, I will move that to another screen. Did, did somebody just join me on the panel? I heard a click. I thought they did. Anyway. So we are back here. Make a row. I don't think anybody joined me on the panel. I can't really tell. I love Merle. Uh, hello, Becky. Thank you for watching. Okay. It's really hard to see the chat on my other monitor, but yes, I do need all. Uh, or you mean I need Al? Yeah, Al is not able to be on yet, but he'll try to be on later. Uh, Paul. Paul Corliss is also busy, but uh, I'm going to real quickly go through this, and I use a color that is, this This is just in case anybody wonders how I take out the background to save ink. Happy New Year's to you too, Becky, and thank you for buying the t-shirt. You and Kim McCrory, Ron Buchanan, and two other people bought a t-shirt, but Kim McCrory bought one during the last show, and I believe you bought one during the show before that, and that really means the world to me. So I've to sold a total of four, four or five cents since I put them out. I'm just very quickly going through here to try to save ink when I print it out because the pen line or the pen does not like to go across laser printed paper or laser printed ink. Uh, and I hope you enjoy that shirt uh, and I hope that it, at some point you'll take a picture of it. I hope everybody does that. CJ Phillipson and... Ron Buchanan has sent me pictures of them wearing it or shared it to my timeline. And that's just plum cool. I think Kim McCrory might be the only one that's done the uh, scroll on version where it's just the text. I might be wrong. But I'm doing this as quickly as possible. If you're just joining us, I'm just trying to save ink. And you'll see in a second why I'm using such an off color to outline it with. I'm doing that so that because I'm pretty confident this color is nowhere in the picture, so it won't drown it out. It, as long as I don't have any breaks in the line, then I'll be able to do this and then pretty quickly 
change the frac around to white. This this program was Paint Shop Pro 4. It's no longer offered. And this video is not about uh, how to use this program. It's mainly for making the patterns. But since I wanted to do this and not have dead air, you're seeing what I'm doing. Oh, you got the scroll on one too. You ordered two shirts? Or that's the one you got. Never mind. <laughs> Every now and then my brain cells don't work together, but they will. Uh, hopefully somebody will join the panel at some time. It's very hard for me to see the chat because it's so small on my other monitor. But once I'm not screen sharing, then then I'll be able to look at the chat normal. But uh, this was a last minute decision to do this show, so I knew uh, any any kind of guarantee of having anybody on the panel would be low. But usually I'm able to look at it myself, but when I'm screen sharing, I'm not able to, but at least not as closely. And I am doing this very roughly. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just for the sake of taking out all that black, so I don't wait to waste a whole bunch of printer ink or toner or whatever you want to call it for a laser printer. Again, if you're just joining us, I'm not going to do every single wild hair you see on here because they're going every which direction, and we can get away without doing that. Because it will still look like Willie if we do it right. And last week you saw me working on a uh, lighthouse. There is no face on a lighthouse, but on portraits, if you watch the show, you know that I start with the face. And you will see me make up my mind and or change my mind in real time because that happens with every pattern I do. Okay, I'm just very roughly going to do this so we don't waste a lot of time just looking at the picture. And as you can see zoomed in, this is this is one more than actual size, but zoomed in, some of it's a little blurry, that's when you just kind of wing it, and I like using the term wing it. Ah. Uh, Trying to catch up with some of the chat. I got the scroller one too. Yes, just one. Okay. How much did you charge for a Willy scroll? Uh, would you charge? Uh, well, be happy if you're talking about a finished piece. That's much more expensive than a scroll saw pattern. I have the patterns on my website. But if you're wanting a finished cutting, we'll have to discuss that, uh, discuss that privately because different things. Uh, Play, play into it, and I'm very sorry that your wife is sick. Uh, I have best thoughts to you. And hopefully I, I got all that right. Okay, we have a microphone in here. This will should go relatively quickly. I'm being a little pickier than I have to be, but it's because I'm, I want as much of the picture in there. I could zoom out a little bit to do this, but I don't necessarily need to. Just very roughly going around it. But uh, be happy, just let me know if you're referring to a scroll saw pattern or a, a finished piece, because I don't want to mislead you. But I can tell you, most of the willy ones I have are would be likely expensive because they have a lot of the hair detail and beard and stuff like that. Uh, as far as patterns are all in the same range or either seven or 10. I uh, don't know right off hand because I'm not looking at it. Woodenvisions.com by the show. By the way, the show is uh, sponsored by Harnell Media, as is my website. Done by Harnell Media, which is Steve Nealon. He specializes in maker websites, but that's not all he does. It's just what he specializes in. See what I got left here. Uh, I could do it soon, depending on what you call soon. Uh, I would just have to spend every waking hour doing it, but that's not a problem because I know what these things can mean. Okay, that's how we got rid of the background there. Uh, I just filled it in on one color. Uh, I'll very quickly do that here, and then we can get started on the actual pattern. I'm not going to add all these wild hairs there either. We'll just pretend those wild hairs aren't there. So 
sometimes I would add those if I'm doing it at my own pace and just want to get it out there. But since we're doing a live show, that would add hours to the show. But I am very sorry to hear about your wife. I hope it's not terminal. But I don't want to get too personal either. I'm not sure if that's a light reflecting off of a... Yeah, it's just the cord. Okay, I wasn't sure. So we can treat that like it's black later. The focus of this will be his face, but we're still going to, you know, do this. Getting a lot less picky on the outline now. So I want to get it printed out and get started. may not be perfect because of how much of this is in the dark, but I will wing it, which is what I like to say. Every now and then, once I'm done doing this, I will refresh the chat because sometimes it freezes up for me. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. And we will clear out this one last spot and we will be ready to go, folks. here. I believe those are picks hanging off of his microphone stand, but I don't I don't want to assume, so I'm just not going to include them. Now, if this feels more than just that black, it means I had a break in the line. I knew that was a chance. I'm going to zoom in. Are you sure? Again, this is not really the purpose of the video. I just wanted to do things in real time so people did not miss anything. A break in the line somewhere is why that went. Ape crap was probably right in there somewhere or not. Somewhere I have a break in the line. Y'all may have already seen it. There it is. See, that's why it turned all green. Okay. Okay, we're going to that and that now we're ready to remember how i told y'all if you've seen me in the past uh when i do detailed pictures i i usually print them out in at least two sides so but majority of it will be on one side so uh, i gotta look at the width and the width will the width will be right here in this corner where you see my mouse it's moving right here but there's nothing there until i hover over the picture the, i'm gonna look at the width of this picture and divided by two, 3,000, that would be 1,500. So let me zoom in. And we'll do this in two different pieces, 1,500, 1,500. Yeah, I didn't quite get there. 1,500, come on. And I went too far. We're getting there. 1,500, come and close. There we go. I'm using the selection tool to do this, if anybody's wondering. 1,500. Okay. I'm going to hit Control-P, and that's a shortcut on a keyboard for doing a printer or printing out something that's going to be in portrait format because it's taller than it is wide. When it's like a sideways rectangle, that would be a landscape format. It's going to take a second because I haven't printed anything out all day. Selections invert for me to do the other side. And this will be a control P. And there we go. Now I can stop screen sharing and we can, uh, we can, uh, let me get over the chat. Uh, restore chat. Let me refresh in case it's. The uh, chat is frozen. You'll hear me say that a lot. Okay, it has not uh, been active since Be, Be Happy said, uh, I'll email you on your website. You can email me. Uh, you can look at my uh, email address if you choose to. You can find that on the, uh, uh, on the description of this video. Even while it's live, it should have my email address in there somewhere. But I need to get the 
the live window in my view. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is move the keyboard because I won't be typing. Uh, see if I can do that without knocking everything off. I'm glad glad y'all y'all are able to hear me. I didn't. I just now realized I may not have had uh, my microphone on. I guess somebody would have let me know by then. If it cuts in and out, it's because it likes to do that while I'm doing live stuff. Uh, okay. As soon as I get my paper in place. Can somebody type something so I can make sure that my uh, chat is not frozen up? I'm not doing that for any other reason than <laughs> I'm not trying to make y'all talk. I just wanted to make sure. Because the last thing I got was from Be Happy. I'll email you on your website. Anyway. I don't know how many people we have watching. Yeah, we have 16 viewers. Okay. Now, first thing we're going to do. Uh, now, I will zoom in when we get to the more important part. But first thing I'm going to do is cut off the white areas here so I can tape them together. So, okay. There's Chris Q. Good to see you, buddy. Thank you for your support. Okay, I gotta locate a razor blade and a straight edge, and we got both. I will zoom in as soon as I get these taped together and we get to drawing. Now, this is one of those pictures that because it had a black background, my mind tells me I'm gonna make it without a background. So, this will be somewhat of a fret, fretwork pattern. If, uh, Trying to think of how to explain that if it didn't make sense. Uh, it would mean that the background would be cut out as well. There would just be a border around his black hat. But let me cut off this other one. Good to see you, Chris Cute. That means a lot when you join the chat because I don't get to see you very often, sir. And you too, John Cousins. It's been a while with you. Rest of y'all are pretty, reg pretty much regulars, but I appreciate y'all just as much. Uh, Every now and then I'm going to refresh the chat because it loves to freeze up on me and I don't want to miss anything since I don't have a uh, panel here. Uh, if anybody does pop in on the panel, then I will then I will know in real time. Uh, until then, I have to monitor the chat as well. Okay, so I'm gonna, uh, I'll explain here in a second why the glasses is there. There's Steve Nealon of Herniel Media. Feller who does my website. By God, he's a good guy. Let me tape these together I, I'm starting the same way I did last time I'm talking 90 miles an hour like I'm running out of time uh, I use I use the clear tape obviously so you can see through it and I only print them out in more than one sheet if it's really detailed but that's most of what I do and I'm trying not to cover up any detail I can get away with doing it in the white somewhere in the black because there's enough shadows in there all I love is making music with my friends. I can't wait to get on the road again. That's Eloy Escajedo in the chat. Rockin' Woodworks and harneomedia.com for uh, Steve Nealon. I'm going to have to cover up some of the detail here because it's only taped up top. Brian Gerving, how you doing, sir? Okay, I'm going to have to put little snippets somewhere in here because there's just way too much gap in there. Little snippets, meaning little tiny pieces of tape. Or just big old pieces of tape. We'll figure something out. Okay, one more. Then I will zoom in as soon as I get things determined. Now, if you've never watched me do a video like this, I use a piece of glass because you want a smooth surface because if you're like me and you do yours on paper or want to do yours on paper, you want a smooth surface. Otherwise, the pen will translate the bumpy texture if you're doing it on something that's uneven. And as you can see, uh, my desktop has a bunch of scratches on it from back when I didn't have glass and I was using a razor blade. So I don't want any bumps in here that aren't intentional. So I'm going to move this out of the way. You get a clean sheet of paper, which I should have already had ready, but I didn't. And if you're living in a cave, don't know who that is. That is Willie Nelson. That was chosen by the viewers. 
at the time. I do have some more Willies and a Waylon and two Merles to choose from after this. If if people are still with me, uh, we get the uh, Cedar Rock Enterprises again. I forgot to put it in my my uh, description here, but Cedar Rock Enterprises is who I get this carbon paper from because it is the darkest I have found and when you work when you're working on scroll saw patterns this way that is uh, dark is good when it comes to scroll saw patterns or Jake Thompson haven't seen you in a while sir or haven't seen you in a chat in a while uh, appreciate it that would be old Jake Thompson Okay, now what I'm doing here is I'm taping the carbon paper and clean sheet of paper underneath it. Uh, this is for the sole purpose of it not moving while I'm doing it, because if it moves, then that could screw me up. But the reason why I'm doing all four corners is because this is a wrinkle that I want pulled taut, and that was... Uh, when you order the Cedar Rock Enterprises carbon paper, it comes in a four by eight sheet folded up. And uh, I cut it into page size things, so it's going to have creases here and there. And I don't want those because those interrupt a uh, or can slow down a pattern making process, at least as far as how I do it. Okay, I'm pulling this taut. You're going to have a little bit of a wrinkle there, but that's okay. Now. Let me move my mouse here, and then once I get this taped in place, we will zoom in as needed. Unfortunately, okay, that sucks because part of the face is going to be, I think, I think I'm going to start on the right for once because I want his face to be in the first part I do here because I don't need that whole microphone here. The edge of the paper is where my hand is over here, right here. So let me do it just like that. Where's the other edge? That's just his ear. So let me move it a little more. And I think this is where we're going to place it. And everything off to this side, I don't care about because it's just a microphone stand. Because I want to make sure if this turns out to be a long video, I want to make sure his face is done first. Uh, I'm going to find something heavy to keep it from moving. Okay, where'd my tape go? Right there. And right there. So, don't tape it upside down. It's not taped upside down. <laughs> really appreciate y'all y'all watching. It shows like we got 21 viewers, I believe. And I appreciate that. If anybody wants to help support the show, I have a Patreon that gives back. And I also sell t-shirts that say either just the text of scroll on. Or the picture of me pointing that says scroll on, like the little, my uh, thumbnail picture there. Or there's also the, uh, what you call it, super chat, which is the dollar sign under where you type if you're on the chat page. None of these are mandatory, but they are definitely appreciated. Uh, I think that was everything. And that is on woodenvisions.com. Okay. Thank you, Neil Shapo, and you're welcome for the live show. I prefer to do the live shows. I haven't actually, I have not done a project video since, uh, I believe, since the Skull Challenge, and that brought me out of the cobwebs to do that. Right now, it's just too cold to do one, but I'm trying to find a heater that will heat up the main part of my shop so that I can still do project videos. But I like these live ones because I get to interact with people, and to me, that's important. Okay. Uh, where did I put my straight edge? Y'all saw me put it up somewhere, but I don't know where I put it. There it is. Okay. I hit it for myself. Real quick pointer. Nothing nothing uh, spellbounding here, but if you ever want to tear a sheet of paper and you don't have any scissors, get a straight edge like this. By golly, that's how you do it. Now the paper stops right about where I tore it, so... I think we're good. I just don't need that excess paper hanging off of there. The red-headed stranger. I actually got to speak to Willie Nelson on the radio once. Uh, he was on a station called KVET. KVET, 98.1 FM in Austin. And he was on there, and I got to 
let's talk to him for a second because I wanted to send him a cutting of him himself. He never ended up getting it because somebody stole it before he got it. But I said something about, uh, I don't want to open up a can of worms by asking how I can get something to you. And Willie being Willie, if you've seen any movie where he's in it, he's pretty funny. He said, well, you want to send me a can of worms? It was just kind of funny. I used to have a recording of the, of the, when, when we talked on the radio, but it died with a whole computer uh, hard drive crash. So but yeah, I actually got to speak to old Willie Nelson. That was cool. Uh, he probably wouldn't know who I am now for, for the devil. But, and that, that radio station is no longer as popular as it was because the best people left it. Anyway, so I'm gonna about to start. I'm gonna about to start. All right, y'all know what I meant. That's a southern thing. So the the edge of the paper, carbon paper, is right here. And I gotta find it where there's no tape underneath. Okay, there's the edge of my paper. So I'm not gonna go beyond that point. Usually it's off to the right, but I wanted to get his face in there. So if I don't draw past there, that's why. I, the other, other edge is right about where the edge is that I just taped, but I'm about to zoom in, and we will get this going, folks. I will start with the eyes. I always start with the eyes for some reason, especially when you're working on a uh, design of somebody that is recognizable by certain features, but Willie Nelson is pretty much his whole face, and that's as far as I can zoom in, so I hope that works for everybody. Okay, I will uh, I will read that. Uh, be happy. I don't know your name. That's why I always call you Be Happy because I so, see so many people going through in the chat. I cannot remember names to save my butt. Uh, but I know you've been a loyal watcher, and I really appreciate that. Okay. Your name is John. That should be easy to, to remember. I'll remember at least for the show, hopefully. Okay, but I'm going to start with his eyes, and you will notice that I, I try to keep talking because for the sake of live shows, if you're watching something being done, I want you to know every single thought I have, and if I, if I stay quiet, it's because I'm trying to think of what I'm going to do, but I'll probably tell you that because I'm being quiet. Uh, and I know what you're saying, shut up and get started. But, you know, I just, uh, I try to give you every thought I have because every pattern I ever do, I change my mind during the pattern. And sometimes even during the editing process. Now, every now and then you're going to see me turn the paper because I have to be able to look at it and I don't want my hat to get in the way like I did on the last show. But uh, hopefully, I don't know how well y'all can see this, so I'm going to bring it in closer. Y'all should be able to see the light reflecting in his eyes. That's a teeny tiny dot. So to me, it's kind of useless to add it to the scroll saw pattern. But a very quick, easy fix for that is obviously most portraits will have a backer. All you have to do is put a little white dot of paint on that part of the backer. And that's done. You don't have to try to make up any detail on that. But this is as far as my camera will zoom in if that's not close enough i can bring the crane a little lower y'all let me know in the chat if that's uh uh let me know if y'all want me to zoom in closer i can just uh, bring the camera down lower but in the meantime i'm gonna go ahead and get started i will be watching the chat the whole time so if you want me to i'm actually getting hot i've had the heater on too long did somebody else join the chat here no nobody that would be al forte how you doing Good. Now, now I got somebody to watch the chat. Awesome. And obviously, it's good to have you here, too. You are live. I am live, baby. Okay, I'm going to hide the panel. No offense, Alex, just so that nothing is missed. Uh, okay, so now they say that's the perfect distance. Now I'm going to minimize the chat so I don't get distracted. Now I can move the camera over to my big monitor so I can see better what I'm doing. Awesome. Great to have you here, Al. Sorry if I stopped you short of what you were doing. Uh, I actually got the furnace going in the shop, so now i got to figure out how to get more heat coming out. Awesome. At, least, at least it's not blowing fuses, blowing air, and actually somewhat of a heated air, but not, not very much. Yeah, I'm actually a little warm because I had my heater on in my little office here for so long that I'm, I'm actually going to take off my sweatshirt, which is weird because it's like 20 or below out there. Not 20 below, but below 20 degrees. 
Yeah, it's it's been it's been cold. Okay, so bear with me while I take my sweatshirt off. I may regret that here shortly, but I do still have the heater next to me. Okay, sorry folks, I didn't plan for this. <laughs> okay, I gotta take my headphones off for two seconds. Okay, it's been a while since I could just wear a t-shirt. That's kind of cool. Anyway. Okay, that little sound you hear is just my little old heater. So everybody, according to the chat, said that that was in close enough. It's weird, though, because the, the lights on the eyes, I couldn't see unless... I don't know if it's clearer to y'all than it is to me, but I couldn't see the lights on the eyes until I got closer. You can just barely see them. But if you're just joining us, put a simple white dot of paint on the backer because they're right out in the middle of the eyes. But anyways, I'm going to get started with the eyes. And Al, if you can let me know if my hand or pen or something go, gets in the way of where I'm drawing and or if I'm not in frame. I'm, I'm trying to watch it, but okay, we're starting because he has wrinkles around his eyes. I started right there. Does that line show up? Yes, it does. Okay. It does. You bet. All righty then. Thank you, sir. I'm glad you're here. You're actually drawing like uh, I want to say about halfway or a third from the right. That's in the chat, uh, the inside chat. Let me let me look at the outside chat. That's probably where I need to page that from. Yeah, the uh, outside it's, chat. It's, all, it's almost. Yeah, there you go. It, that that's pretty good. That's almost halfway in the center. Yes, yeah, sure. It's a little bit offset, but I, I think part of why I do that is so people can see the whole picture while I'm working on it. But uh, right, that little part I just did right there, that eye is done. I mean, it's going to be a little thin here, so I may make the brow bone come out a little bit than where it is what do I mean than where it is a uh, little further out than where it is in the photo because of that is so close to another cutout which nine times out of ten the dark portion of a uh, photograph turned into a scroll top pattern will be cut out unless the pattern designer says cut out white now it wouldn't be willy if I made just flat eyebrows so I have to add that detail in uh, now, I want to suggest the lower eyelid, but I don't want to make the white portion of the eye a floater. So I'm just going to do a line where the shadow already is and just suggest that. We don't want to go all the way across because if I do, it'll this part here will fall out. But you see, we got enough to hold on right there. And since I'm here, I'll go ahead and do the, the little bag and wrinkle under there. And this also suggests the bridge of the nose because there's not a distinct, distinct line for that. So those two pieces have already defined that eye. Uh, but since I'm already working on this eye, some of his eyebrow is still brown. And I'm going to get as true to the photograph as possible. I'm, I'm actually surprised that we still have uh, Willie Nelson around. I mean, he's getting up there in age. I'm in Loretta Lynn both. And I'm sure there are some others. Okay, I just traced what I saw. I didn't have to invent anything there. Uh, now we're getting into a little bit of shadow and detail inside the the eyebrow. I don't think I'm covering anything up here. Some of this I'm making it up just artistically. I don't even know why. I'm suggesting the edge of it there. And when you're working on elderly people, it can be overkill to do every single wrinkle you see. But I also want to be true to the photograph. Now, even though this is not the edge of the sheet of paper, I'm, I'm just working from where that seam is because I know that seam will cause a little skip. All of this hat will be cut out except for except for the light shining off of it. I'm going to keep that. Okay. Don't have to necessarily do a lot of detail inside of the white of the eyebrow because you, you can just tell it's a bushy eyebrow. And most of the detail is already done on the rest of the eyebrow. A little bit there, and as I said before, I'm going to, i got to find out where I left off on my line. There it is. I'm going to make that area to the right of the eye shadow slightly wider than it actually is. So it's a stronger piece. And we're going to run that right into the microphone. 
and we'll work on the microphone later. Now we'll start on the other eye, I guess. Well, no, let's, let's continue down that cheekbone where we see a little bit more detail. Some of this may translate funny because of, uh, you know, there's some things don't look right on a drawing, but that just shows more wrinkles here and there. But uh, this right here helps suggest the edge of his mustache, obviously. It doesn't just suggest it, it shows it. So there's a little bit of hair down there, so I'm going to use that as a little break. And you don't have to do much detail at all, just just width of enough for a pilot hole. And uh, are, are we still going, Owl? I want to make sure no technical difficulties have happened. Everything's Owl. fine. Okay. Um, chat. <laughs> chat and I, I just, my, my mic was muted, so. You wouldn't I hear understand. Me and stuff, so. Not the problem. I appreciate that. Uh, just wanted to make sure because sometimes I'll be looking and all of a sudden something's gone dark. <laughs> nope, okay. no, there. This eyebrow is actually very unique. I mean, people that have bushy eyebrows have unique eyebrows, but this one goes like all kinds of weird places. But we're trying to stay true to the photographs. Not all of it's dark enough to see with the naked eye, or at least not on camera. So I'm just suggesting the... When you want to stay true to a photograph, even with hairs like this, you want to go the direction the hairs are going so it stays realistic. And there's a split in the eyebrow here. So I'm just accenting it that way. And the rest of them, I'm just going to suggest the edge of it because it is a light colored. Now, I could attach it there, but I want it as, as strong as possible. So I'm just not going to. And you can make a pilot hole anywhere in that zigzag. But we have a break here and a break here in case anybody's wondering, well, that's going to fall out. No, it won't. Uh, if you're confident, you're scrolling. A little bit of detail on the inside of the eyebrow, so I'm going to go ahead and add it. And if anybody has any questions, there's no such thing as a stupid question. When it comes to learning, we all learn somehow. And if I don't know the answer, I won't pretend to. <laughs> Trying to keep this in frame while I'm working on it, and I got to turn it around. And I don't see any questions, by the way. Alrighty then. Sometimes I get in my own way with with me being here and the pen being here. My pen's in my own way, so I got. That's why you usually see me starting away from myself. And that that starts a. I don't know what they call that line that goes up the bridge, the bridge of the nose or whatever the hell that's called <laughs> anyway i'd say brow but that, yeah that, brow. well yeah bra yeah it, well it's that wrinkle that comes up on either side of somebody's the bridge of somebody's nose i have no idea i think there's one here but it's right at the uh the same in the where the two pieces of paper come together so i'm just going to throw it in there uh, okay let's start with the now you'll see we have the shadow from the nostrils as well as the shadow on the lower portion of the nose. I'm going to ignore the shadow on the lower portion of the nose and just do the uh, nostrils because it, it could look like he has a big old gaping nose if I don't. Some things just don't translate well. By the way, it's called bunny lines. Bunny lines. Yeah. All righty then. I'm going to I'm going to assume that's uh, slang. Well, one common place where wrinkles form and is the nose, including the upper nose bridge wrinkles referred to as bunny lines. Oh, be dang. Did you yeah. Google that? Well, of course. I'm not. But of course. You, you, say, you should have said, no, man, I already know that. Now, when I got to the mustache, I did little jagged lines under there. So, Yeah, and down there, the, those wrinkles that run from the nose to the mouth are called frown lines. Nasal labial folds. Okay, well. The typical people call it uh, <laughs> frown lines. <laughs> did you say? Never mind. I, I. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Did you say L A B I A L? Yes. I A L. The, I thought that was like way below on another gender. Labial flows, or, or I'm sorry, nasal labial folds. Well, labial okay. meaning lips. And yeah. No, okay. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I shouldn't be giggling like a little schoolboy, but um, yeah. <laughs> I, I thought that only referred to female below. Uh, that's as far as I'll go with that. I don't know why I giggled like that. It just, I was not prepared to hear that on a facial feature. Becky's Texas uh, workshop, uh, changing the subject, says that's better than boogers. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, I'm just suggesting the side of the nostril. There was a shadow there, but I'm trying to make as many breaks as possible. We have one there. We have one between the nostrils, so we should be good. Now, most people don't have this shadow here as distinct, but since he's old or elderly and he has a lot of wrinkles, we're going to include that because it, it's, it's there. And I see a little bit of a... I don't know how well that shows up on camera, but you can sort of see the contour of the eye, eye orbit, which is the, like if you were looking at a skull, it'd be the eye opening. So I'm going to add that because when you get elderly, your skin loosens and it shows these little things like that. It's, in a way, it's kind of like a baby. A baby is growing into their skin. Elderly people are sort of, there's, I don't even, never mind, I'm not a doctor. So y'all know what I mean. Uh, and, and as far as patterns go, that's some of the similarities between babies and elderly people is, you know, wrinkles. But uh, you don't want to do overkill on a, on a baby because it can look funny because babies are not old or elderly. Sorry, I'm trying to be terminology friendly to anybody that out there. Oh, excuse me. That might be elderly. I'm no spring chicken myself, but I look older than I am. I definitely don't act older than I am. Okay. Okay, I think we've... Now we got got some unique shadows here. Or not shadows, but wrinkles. Shadows on the wrinkles, so we're just going to use those. Going to break them up a little bit. And that looks to be done. And we're going to start on this other eye, but this is going to start the uh, the eyelid. Your eye will finish that, but I'll I'll do as much of it as I can. Doing the darkest shadows first, and then you can choose among those lighter shadows whether or not you want to use them. But you know, the more you add, the more brittle it becomes. Now there's I'm going to go ahead and. Do some of the wrinkles I can see that are kind of faint may not be show up on camera, but this right here, I can even bring it a little closer. It should guess the eyelid more. I know you saw the darker one that was here. Uh, I'm going to add these in next and then play it by ear on which other eyeshadows, eyeshadows, you know what I mean. And we don't want to have too many wrinkles crossing over each other because that would create a floater. So I'm just halfway making this up as I go, but going by the direction of those wrinkles are going. So as you can see, nothing crossed over anything else. I just sort of suggested the shape of it. Now we're going to do exactly what we see. Right there in the corner by the, of the eye, by the tear duct. I'm going to stop there. You'll see a light little break. A little bitty break between the detail here and the detail there. So I'm going to take advantage of that for a bridge so that the white part of the eye stays in. Now, since his eyelid sticks out more, that's why you have a very distinct line. It's kind of a, a fold over the top of his, his eye there. That's why there's no texture to it. Now, the reason why you can see a majority of his iris, which is the colored portion of the eye, is because he's looking up and out. Most people looking forward, part of that iris will be under the, the lower eyelid, but we got lucky on this one. Now, we have very little room to work here, so I'm just going to very lightly suggest that white part of the eye and come off with a tear duct to suggest the other white. Now, we still have something holding on on both, so that's not a floater. So both eyes are technically done. Uh, unless I see something. Now, he does have lower eyelashes, but you can barely see them, so I don't even know if I'll mess with those. But I'm wondering if I should at least suggest it, because I do have that wrinkle there. But I don't have one over here, so I'm going to suggest the lower eyelids. Make sure I'm in frame. There we go. Yeah, I'm just going to, you know, do little jagged lines here and there, just to give you enough of an area to do pilot holes. And this will suggest those lower eyelids as, as well as, it's and or lower eyelids or wrinkles. 
Uh, I think it works best for wrinkles, but uh, that sort of finished off that eye and made it look more realistic, in my opinion. Now, I'm going to go to this. There are little mustache or little beard hairs coming in and out of here, but I'm just going to do my best to wrap around them. And part of that, as you can tell, is behind the beard. So I'm just going to do little pieces of it here so we can stay as true to the photograph as possible. I'm just I'm making up some of the shapes here. And somebody's writing on Facebook cannot look unless it's somebody want to be on the panel. Okay. Now, now I might have even gone further than I needed to on there, but we got more shadow right here. Now if you wanted to and didn't care about the the hairs going across the shadow, you could just trace all that in, but I I want to at least suggest that there's hairs going across there. I need to learn to shut, uh, close my messenger when I'm doing these shows because I never know if somebody's trying to write to me or if it's part of group chat. So I'm gonna check just in case it's important. Yeah, that was that was uh, Jamie saying he'll try to pop on when he can. Mate, awesome, awesome mate. Appreciate it. Jamie is uh, JP Dash Woodwork. Uh, that's his website through Harnum Media, and he's one. Fourth or fifth, I don't want to go through all the names of, uh, what should we call it, uh, Makers International Podcast, as is Chris Cute, who was in the chat earlier. I don't know if he still is. Uh, I, thought was, I thought it was five guys separated by three countries, or, or from three countries only separated by the English. Mother. Yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Chris Cute is the voice of that, the host of the show, if you want to. Give give the show a host is uh, Richard Morley, uh, and that's on Sundays. I don't remember the exact time. I want to say four thirty Central, something like that. But I've been wrong before. Somebody. And Al, I never gave you a chance to introduce yourself, and you're also a member of the Makers Media Network. If you want to tell folks where they can find you, sure. Uh, I'm Al Forte, uh, uh, Odessa Woodworking and Maker Shop on Facebook and YouTube. Um, anyway, thank you for having me and like i always say this is just for fun awesome so have fun i mean you know if you're going to do anything may as well do it for fun exactly just uh and everything else will fall in line and in place well it should but it doesn't always but yeah i get you uh you recently put out a video where you got to meet steve french and i'm very envious of that because i think steve french is a great guy i haven't got to talk to him in a while I'm taking a swig of Dr. Pepper, so I'm just going to show you all that while I'm talking. But, yeah, you got to meet Steve French, and I'm envious of that. Well, you too could meet Steve French. I happen to be in Lakeland, Florida, where my mom and sister live. And and uh, uh, he said, uh, actually, it was around the hurricane. He said, hey, next time you're in town, give me a holler. And I did, and boom, 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 we uh, we ended up meeting. and um, we there had was, Delicious buffalo wings. And he brought some nice little gifts, and, and that's what the video is about. Uh, it's simple, quick, easy, you know, just for fun. That's awesome. Have you, did you get a chance to meet Daryl Jones or Russ Clarity since they're uh, there in Florida? No, Daryl Jones, I didn't. Uh, but he actually, and, and that's kind of ironic that you mentioned, he actually said, hey, you don't mind not invite uh, uh, <laughs> Russ? And I said, no, not at all. So uh, Russ and, and Cameron were there. And that's he also awesome. His nephew, too. That's uh, cool. I've met yeah, Cameron. Awesome. I haven't met Cameron in person, but uh, whenever he was on Russ's show, I would, I got to know him yeah, a little Cam bit. Cameron's a, a very nice, uh, very nice, quiet person. Um, he's uh, he's doing, I think, some some form of construction. They're, they were actually remodeling a house, and uh, he's starting his his business and continuing down that line of of uh, I'm going to call it traditional, you know, craftsman uh, woodworker or carpenter or whatever kind of like like russ all right uh not to jump off subjects but to stay uh that was my fault that we went off topic not that i'm breaking out or anything but right now what i'm doing i don't know how well it shows up on camera is where the bottom of the teeth come up to the bottom lip and it's a very thin area but right there is where you would put your pilot hole uh and i'm sorry if it looked like i was jumping away from you there uh al now Y'all may see that the shadow of the nose onto that 
mustache, but being that not everything translate well translates well, uh, I think I'm going to avoid that shadow. But somewhere in there, the upper lip goes into the mustache, and i got to figure out how I want to translate that without it looking weird. But right now, I'm going to start with the shadow on the upper lip that's actually shining onto the teeth. That's actually the shadow we're seeing is where the upper lip is, is onto the teeth. Let me get more in the middle of the hair, thing here. And we're holding on here so we don't have to worry. There's, there's no, It's not going to be a floater. And when you see me get my thumb real close, it's because that's where the split in the paper is, and I don't have tape all the way up and down it. And we have a little bridge here. Not much of one, but a little bit. And I'm just sort of doing that. Let's do it on the other side. And i got to be somewhat careful here, so you can see where the... I think... Well, I talked about that being the shadow, but I don't... I don't see any distinct lips up here, so I'm just going to trace the shadow I see and then do suggestions of mustache above that. Because I think a lot of this is shadow and upper lip. It's kind of hard to tell in the photograph. Um, I think so. Here's... Uh, yeah, you can see hairs here and there, but yeah, not much to go by, so I'm just going to suggest it and kind of... I'm being quiet because I'm trying to think of how where to start because I don't see a single hair in here. I'm just trying to just going to start a zigzag and you can break that zigzag anywhere you want. Right there, I just made a little triangle so you'd have a place to put a pilot hole. I'm breaking this up so it's not one big long cut. It could be, but I'm afraid that would that would uh, weaken it. So there's another another spot for a pilot hole and really can't see many hairs at all. In this area. Another pilot hole. I probably could have continued this line all the way across, but just for giggles, I did not. Eh, that looks kind of generic there. So I may go ahead and add it to this one. Uh, but it, it gives you the idea that that's where the mustache is meeting the upper lip. And I hope, hope you all will agree with that. Uh, Looking around, there's all kinds of bushiness going on up under that lower lip. So I may kind of reinvent that so it doesn't translate funny. Okay. Yeah, his hairs are going all kinds of different directions here. I'm going to start above those hairs and do the shadows that I can see. And uh, those hairs do break up that shadow. That's why I'm doing it in pieces. And I told you I tend to change my mind in real time while I'm doing these things. So that's why if I sound indecisive at any point during this, this is why. Because I might as well stay true to the photograph. So I'm going to try to trace what I can see. It may not look pretty, but it'll be there. Not You don't have to trace every little single thing there. But if you want to stay true to the photograph, pay attention to the direction that the hairs are going. Although we're not actually tracing hairs, we're tracing the shadows among the hairs. And that's a lot of what scroll saw patterns are. You're cutting shadows most of the time. But not in every case, because sometimes darkness is just detail. Okay. And we got a little area of shadow here that's separated by hairs. So I'm going to make a distinct break there. And I'm sorry that I can't do all this right side up because it's it's difficult for me to see. I have my eyesight's going to crap. Yeah, I keep flipping my head around and I'm sorry, I'm giving everybody a crick in the neck. I am not. It gets to a point where I gotta flip around again or flip in my chair, one of the two. But anyway. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna try to be more conscious of that and keep because I can like like if I'm gonna start doing up here, I'm gonna have to turn it to bring the pin towards myself I just work better that way. So I apologize for anybody that gets a crick in their neck. <laughs> By the way, Charles, I'm just messing with you. I, I know you are, uh, but but it, it is true. I mean, it makes for awkward viewing, I can imagine. Now, there wasn't many hairs going through there, so I'm doing that. I'm, I'm going to actually add a little bit of shadow in there. That way we have plenty of places for pilot holes. I'm making up shadows that aren't even there. Becky says... Charles, you're making that picture look like you're painting it. It looks really nice. Well, thank you, darling. 
I don't know why I said it like that, but thank you very much. Uh, I like how, at least until we get to the beard, how easy those shadows are to find. So y'all are seeing the same things I am. Because the less I have to make up on the spot, the better. Uh, when it's going to get difficult is when I start to do all this here. Because I'm not seeing distinct edges. But because this, this picture is not going to have a background. It's going to have... Well, I'll just show you. I'll, I know I'm jumping around a little bit. But where the black goes all the way to the edge... I'm giving it a border and you can make this border any width you want. Uh, I tend to do it about this wide, but this will be wood. The wide area we're going to keep this hat will be cut out. So I tend to give it a border for strength. Obviously you have to have some kind of border so that you can see where the hat ends and everything else begins. And I'll also be doing that for a majority of that microphone. Uh, but if, if that border's too narrow for you, bring it out to here. You know, it's, it's all up to you. And even if you buy a pattern for me, if it looks too thin, make it wider. Now, we said that the are areas that, the, that are reflecting off of the black hat, you can keep. But since we're doing a border, where am I at? A border around here, I'm going to bring it right up to that white. Okay, Charles. Kate, Kenny wants you to hold on. She's got to go feed the masses. Okay. Possible. I will hold on for about one second. And there we go. That wasn't even one second. Sorry, Katie. I, I got to keep going, girl. Okay, I might as well. Okay, now remembering that we're keeping. Sorry, that I can't wait for you, Katie. I know she knows that, but oh, being that. These areas are going to be state. These areas are going to be wood. I have to suggest the edge of that hat. So I'm going to. I'm, I don't know why I scribbled that so bad. But I'm going to. How do I want to do that? Okay, you can make this area right here a pilot hole where I just suggested the edge. Because if I, if I drew all the way to here. All the way along the edge, this white area would fall out. It's not white, but you know what I mean. It's lighter than the rest. But since this line, it shows where the edge of the paper is. That's why I didn't draw past it. But for now, we can make a line suggesting the brim of the hat and the crown of the hat. And you put your pilot hole right there where they intersect. And this here, since it doesn't have a background, the crown itself will serve as the detail. So I'm going to... Oh, I didn't think about that. Stop, Charlie. Okay, okay. Scratch that. I do have to outline all of this because I'm not going to have a background on that. So what I'm going to do is when I, I do the, when I do the border around where am I at? Sorry, it's okay. When I do the border around the hat, this is not on the on the carbon paper underneath. Is why I'm not drawing it yet. But when I draw this line. That border is what's going to hold all this together, and I'll attach this lit up area or reflected area onto the border, and you'll see that when I get to that. But I can go part way into it on both sides and just leave a little bridge somewhere in here, and that will connect it to the, the, the border like we did the border on the hat. And I know you can see little bitty parts of white, but that's not even worth keeping it or light on the hat. Okay. Now, before I get to the microphone, I'm going to finish what I can see here. And there's a occasional stray hair going out on that. And I just noticed we have a mustache and part of his beard starting here, so I want to suggest that. You don't have to add those little hairs that come out of there, but I'm doing it just because I love detail. But believe it or not, this is going faster than the lighthouse did last week. I might have just done too much talking last week. I don't know. Last week being Friday. And we start to get into a little bit of shadow here. So I'm creating a border. Because I'm going to separate the shadows under here from, from the backer. So I'm going to have a little border right here going up to his ponytail. And I'll go ahead and show you that border by just doing the shadows here. So this right here we're keeping. It's going to be a bridge to suggest where the edge of the neck is. And was that even in frame? Yeah, I'm not sure if it was or not. Now the ponytail is kind of in a in a blur, so I'm just kind of winging it. It's not going to be very detailed at all. 
you're not seeing every aspect of that ponytail or that yeah ponytail or braided area whatever you want to call it because part of it is in shadow that's why i made a real jagged edge there okay charles you can keep going katie's back okay thank you katie i was so worried <laughs> okay and i actually didn't do much while you were gone katie i don't think i did while i was talking about the hat okay that's the shadow in there we're suggesting the directions of the hairs by doing some of them inside of the braids. I'm actually surprised how quickly this is going, being how long it took me to do that lighthouse Friday. Okay, some of these are not as distinct as others. Now, when you're not doing a picture, you know, most people don't paint their finished pieces, so you're not going to be able to tell that, that his thing here is red, white, and blue. So, you know, if you want to stain it or paint it you know with or watercolor it however you want to do it uh where you can see through it then that's up to you i just do the detail but we're not quite there yet but you can say we got reds and blues and whatever there and those are technically lighter than the black obviously so that's why you're just going to see me suggest those shapes they're not going to make a lot of sense in the actual scroll saw pattern unless you're looking at the source photo but we want to try to stay true to the photograph I'm just suggesting these things. And as you can see where that tape is, it's a little hard to see. But that's actually the edge of the neck. And it's very thin, so we can make that thicker if we want to. Uh, and I think I will. And I made that bridge the wrong shape right there. Uh... Let's go ahead and just make all that black, even though there's different le levels of shadow. I'm making it wider than it actually is so that it'll stay stable. When there's different shades of, like you can see, I think you can see, you can see how like one of the folds on the neck or on the side of the vocal cords or whatever you call it, you can see that. I could probably add that, but everything else is so, there's shadow there, not there. But I'm afraid it might translate funny, so I'm just going to make all that dark except for I may not even no. See, that's me deciding in real time. I'll start this, but not go all the way up to the chin with it. So all of this, majority of this, will be cut out. And hey, by the way, Charles. Yes, sir. Uh, Steve French from Wood and Stuff says, "Howdy, folks. I'm listening, but not watching. Working in the shop, so." Awesome. Becky asked him if his ears were burning. That's the same thing I thought too, Becky. <laughs> no, Steve French is a good. Steve. Steve French is a good feller. Okay, now that, that's just to suggest that part of your... I don't know how to explain what that is, but like if you stiffen up your neck, that's that part. But on elderly people, it's a little more disdained. I don't know what... I call called. it a turkey neck. Yeah, we'll call it a turkey neck, but I didn't want to sound disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now you see we have... Okay, I was trying to think of how I was going to word this. At first, I was going to add some kind of bridge across here because I was saying we have shadow through here, but we don't want it to be brittle. But we can get away with making all that shadow. So forget what I was just about to say. Now, you can see the bottom of the beard. So we can go ahead and draw that and just, you know, make it, you know, even though there's shadows, once you come around the edge of that beard, you still got the shadows here. And for the sake of time, I may not... I may, I may just suggest, suggest the shape of those instead of trying to draw each individual hair. That would be next to impossible. So that's all I'm doing here. I'm breaking up some of the areas where there's not a break. And Lee Nyden says, uh, uh, evening, Charles, from Scholar's Chat. Good evening, Mr. Lee Nyden. Lee Nyden will also be in a, doing a show tonight. It's going to be on uh, how to become a chapter president for SAW, the Scroll SAW Association of the World. He can, he can tell you about that if he so chooses. Am I still on frame? Almost not. I got my monitor in the way here, too. So, And we got the hairs starting there. So that's going to help somewhat of a bridge. And we got the wrinkles in the neck. Okay, now, 
you, you could probably see that light area right here. We could use that as a bridge to connect to the beard. So this whole area won't, doesn't have to be cut out all as one piece. So that'll give us one area of strength. I still can't believe this is going. Now, Al, you were here for the lighthouse video, weren't you? Yes, I was. You remember how I was freaking out about how long it took, but it didn't seem to be that much detail. This one has a lot of detail. It seems to be going kind of quick. Maybe I'm just going quicker. Yeah. Or maybe, maybe it has been a while. I don't know what. No, it's been an hour, almost an hour and a half. So maybe it's not going as quick. Anyway, sure felt like it. But I, th I think doing something recognizable, a lot of people recognize who Willie Nelson is. So I think that might hold people's interest for longer. I mean, I'm willing to do this as long as I need to. And I'm just suggesting hairs here because I don't want to tear up the bottom of that beard. But I'm trying to be somewhat true to the direction of the hairs. Now, y'all might feel a little bit cheated if, uh, because of the fact I'm not doing each individual, you know, shadow that's in there, but, you know, this is an, also a way to show you, you can suggest detail just as much as adding detail. Sometimes I still need to remember that when I'm working on a pattern, but I love to challenge myself. So I'm intentionally leaving these, this area under here with no detail. That way it's a strong connection, separation between the cuts. I'm going to make sure I stay in, in the uh, camera range here, a little bit closer here. I'm being really, really rough drafting it here. But I think y'all get the point here because, I mean, yes, we know he has a beard, but it's not, it, it, the shape of his beard is not a recognizable feature. So that's why we don't have to worry about each individual hair here. His eyes, nose, and mouth are more recognizable. So you got to be a little more careful on those. Uh, I hate to say it, but I can't tell if that's his skin or some kind of pink cloth. Wow, that's. I think that's his skin on his neck. Wow. Okay, I'm having to. Okay, I'm gonna have to zoom my camera out a little bit because my piece of glass is running into the uh, monitor feet. Yeah, but I don't know. Does that look like skin to you? That's some wrinkly old skin if it is. Yeah, it's turkey neck gone wild. That's some serious turkey neck. Love you, Willie, but good lordy. Okay, so we got some wrinkles here. I'm just going to break up that way. They don't make the neck real weak. Don't have to add every single one of them. We're adding the distinct ones. Wow, that's that's some. That has got to be a cloth of some kind, a bandana. Please tell me that is. Never mind. I don't know. I'm just. I shouldn't even guess. I can't even say what it looks like because I'm a respectable feller. <laughs> anyway, remembering that this line right here is where we cannot go off the edge of the paper. So I'm just going to suggest, and you don't have to be clean with this at all. Just try to stay within the shape. I'm trying to do the, uh, the shadows on the guitar strap. And this is, this guitar strap, just guitar strap has been around for a while. I've seen this in almost every photograph of him. I'm sure he has more than one, but it's definitely a trademark thing. And we don't have to be real distinct. We just wanted to, uh, show that there's a gap between these things along with a little bit of the shadow when it gets to the cross piece and there's somebody that knits or whatever can tell you what those are called but i don't know yeah neil neil shafto says sometimes he has a rolled up scarf i think yeah that, yeah i think i think you're right neil i i think it, it's 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 possible but it, it almost matches the pinkness of his skin tone so i mean it, it it's definitely an awkward shadow now, because not all of this is showing, this is just for the sake of how his uh, guitar strap is designed. I'm going to do it out here in the blank area. Th this ridge that's on his gu guitar strap is shaped like this. I've seen it on other pictures. That's why it has such a unique look to it. And you can see that, that shape starting to happen right here. So that's just to explain that for trivia's sake. <laughs> I'm trying to do this really quickly because it's kind of boring detail, but it is there. And if you're just now joining us late, I will not be adding all this crazy hair out here. I'm just going to do the area you see right in here. I'm not going to do all the...
crazy hair is there. I will do, I will add, you know, the back of his head, you know, where it starts to go into the braided ponytail, but I'm not going to add all that crazy hair there. And where did I leave off? Now, let me know if I start to go off frame. No, I think I'm still safe. Okay, we got to suggest the edge of that thing, so I'm going to do that. It feels like this one's going quicker, but it definitely isn't. But maybe it's just better and faster. Well, in this area, it, it's okay to be a sl somewhat sloppy and faster, but it's not in my well, nature to say I'm getting better. But thank you. <laughs> Go ahead the, now. By the way, Charles, Jerry's machine says, okay, the show can start. I'm here now. All right. Uh, glad you were able to make it, Jerry, because I just could not start without you, sir. Pretend you've seen nothing else. Uh, okay. Now remembering this line is where the edge of the paper is, so I can I'm only going to do t detail up to that. Uh, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go ahead if you're about to talk. I, I yeah, heard you. Yeah, he working in honeybee says it's an Indian weave. It was given to him by a group in Nevada. Now I'm assuming we're talking about the scarf. The, the, uh, I think they're talking about the uh, the guitar strap there. Somebody oh. probably googled it. Okay, that that's that's my bad then. Yeah. Okay. That's that neat makes, to know the story behind that. I'm glad somebody thought to do that because yeah, that makes a lot more sense. I certainly didn't. Absolutely. Okay. I'm gonna. I'm fired. <laughs> no, you're not fired. You don't have to Google everything we do here. <laughs> I'm just doing a little bit of detail in here, but being that we're about to go off of the edge of the paper, I'm just doing the uh, suggestion of detail of where the braids are in the shadows and the hair. Again, if you're just now joining us, you don't actually draw the hairs in most cases. You're drawing the shadows between the hairs or the clusters of hairs. And even in doing that, I won't go ahead. Well, I was going to say, welcome Steve Brown from Australia. Australia. Yeah. But I might. I'm probably laughing at my uh, accent there. I've tried to do a British accent, but uh, Jamie Page says I sound posh, which is kind of like a a snooty British person, I guess. Because <laughs> I talk like this, apparently. Oh, I don't know. Anyway. But do you stick your pinky out when you drink yeah, tea? No, I drink Dr. Pepper with my pinky out, of course. Well, that's posh. Quite posh, yes. All right, now. I just started talking. I was saying, all right, now, over here. No, I, I'm a... Uh, even though there's more shadows up next to that line, I'm going to wait till I do the other other half. And I was sitting here pointing at something that you couldn't see. Now, this is past the line, so we're not worried over here. I'm going to start on the hair. See if I can get that in frame. Sorry if it's upside down, but it's got to be close to me. I don't Martin, like... Just uh, joined you, I guess. Howdy, Mark Lindsay. Okay. I'm going to take a swig of Dr. Pepper right here. Good day, Mark. How are you today? Good day, Mike. Okay, without Googling it, you've heard the term bloke, right? Yes. Without Googling it, Googling it, what is the female version of bloke? In five seconds. A bird? Five, four, three. Bird. Two, bird. One. No. The female term of bloke is Sheila. Ah, okay. That's your trivia for today. I'm not. I'm not tracing this hair down to the T, but I am trying to stay true to it. Mark says it's bird. It's got to be bird. No. Nope. Katie says it's hussy. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm suggesting the edge of the hair right here. By the way, I didn't have to do it all in one piece, but I got lazy. Bill says your Aussie accent sounds like an attempt at an American accent. Y'all. Uh -huh. <laughs> crikey and I've, I've talked to people before they said crikey as not not that many people say crikey and very few say shrimp on the bobby i'm just going by what i've heard i could be wrong because it happens every now and then yeah we were talking about you steve you, you should you should hear it i guess it's recorded huh we're caught yeah we're caught right there Some, mark sometimes says, mark says in australia it's sheila yeah well done I told you. I told you. I done told you that. Anyway, uh, 
uh, the I sound in Australian is like more like an oi. Like that's nice, very nice there. But I'm I'm not gonna match it because I'm not Australian and I'm just trying to be funny and entertain people. Doesn't always work well. Okay, now the hairs, the shadows of the hair going past that line. Remember, remember, there's no need to go past that line because there's nothing underneath it. But you can see the carbon paper there. Anyway. <laughs> Lee says, I'm going to sneak up on this here alligator. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's some comedians that talk about that, but I can't repeat that on live on the air. Remember the lines here, so I don't. there's no need for me to go past it. It's all that's really left is the microphone and the forehead, where the forehead meets the hat. And that's a very distinct line, so we don't have to get all, get all artsy-fartsy with that. Now... I think what I can get away with on this microphone stand is because there's not much detail, I could treat it like it's black and just do that that uh that border around it. So I think we'll do that for time's sake. I want to try to be consistent about the thickness of that border around it. See, actually, the edge of the paper is here. I thought it was further away. Whoops, it moved. No, it moved. I Okay, never mind. I don't know right where the edge... No, the edge of the paper is here, so I, I totally butchered that. Okay, so we're going to start the border here and just suggest the shape of that microphone stand because we all know, although we know he's a singer, his face is the focal point of this of this uh, scroll saw pattern. That's why I'm not too worried about showing the detail except for that little bit there. The rest of it's just going to be an outline protected by this border. This area will be cut out. And... uh. If you're brand new to drawing scroll saw patterns on paper, that's something you can do is put X's in areas you know are going to be cut out. I just did it off frame, I think. But, you know, little things like that are little things you can do to. Uh... Oh, I forgot. I, I roughly did the outline here, so I got to actually look where the edge of that thing is here. Being a little bit sloppy because the microphone doesn't really matter as much as the rest of it. But I can just barely see a line there. There's the marker pile there. And we're going to go right up into that beard hair we did. Now You could totally leave it out and just kind of put the yeah, line of his face down to... You're to, right. Okay, folks. Okay, that's called winging it. And somebody say, no, man, do the microphone. But since it, Al's right, we could. Because we know that there's going to be a little bit of a cheek hair. So let's do that. Thank you, Al. You just saved us about probably 30 minutes or more. Now, I just put a cheek right through there, and we just forgot all about that. If y'all are mad, blame Al. Well, I, I give you credit because because you, you said, you know, the microphone's not the focus. And I thought, well, if it's not the focus, that nah, just leave it yeah. out. Why well, edit? Now, I just sort of guessed at where that hat's going behind there. I could be way off, but I'm going to – and that's something I can do on the computer portion and fix that. Now, for the sake of time, I could also – got to see where I drew a line here. I that went a little way off there. Yeah, Mark, it does matter to Willie, definitely. Oh, it definitely matters to Willie. And, and yeah, Lee is saying, yeah, it's always Al's fault, no matter what. <laughs> Absolutely, dang lately now. But I think for the sake of time, I'm not going to necessarily stop, but I think, okay, I've said more than once, but if you're just joining us, this, okay, let me use this to show you. The edge of the paper is right here. For the sake of time, I can show you all the computer portion and make this part into the scroll saw pattern online. You can see what it looks like without all the, the picture on top of it. But first thing I'm going to do, I need to do is do a little more suggestion of hair here and a little more on the shadow there. And then we can probably do the computer portion of this. Now, if you're just joining us, the program I use is Paint Shop Pro 4. I don't even think it's made anymore. But uh, if you'll watch some of Lee Knight and shows, he uses GIMP, and he does uh, basic tutorials on GIMP. I don't know if he's done something specific like this, because I've slept since then. But I know he shows you how to do different things, scroll saw pattern-wise, on GIMP. And he also experiments with different methods on different things. And I'm being really sloppy here is why I'm not explaining what I'm doing. I'm just suggesting the shadows on there. Um... Uh, Remember, some of those hairs in here, they're a little curly. It's part of his head hair and his beard hair are sort of overlapping, so it's going to be a little awkward shaped. Just as a, a thought uh, on Paint Shop Pro, 
Whoa, it says Corel at the top. But anyway, paint well, they shop. do make they do oh. make other versions of Paint Shop Pro. I think they're up to like twelve or fourteen now. But I learned on four, and yep. I, the only reason I use the computer is for the coloring and cleaning up portion to display on the internet because when people can see the dark and the light, they can make it out better. But go there ahead. is a thirty day free twi trial trial from Paint Shop Pro twenty eighteen. Uh, at paintshoppro.com, but anyway, um, but like you're saying, uh, Lee uses uh, uh, GIMP, and I've been using GIMP also. GIMP's also a, a totally free download. Yeah, there's and a GIMP and there's an Inkscape, and one is GIMP.org and one is Inkscape.org. Very, very, uh, very good to use. Absolutely. And it's free. Now, what I'm doing. I usually wait till both halves are done before I make it do the computer portion, but I think since the majority of this is his face, I think we, we're safe. And you can also see how sloppy it can look until it's colored in, because sometimes it may not even look remotely like him until it's colored in. And you think you're about to see it, but, but no, there's still carbon paper there. Let me zoom out. And then I will zoom back in as needed. Just bump my microphone. There we go. And we keep the tape. You can usually only use the tape about twice before it's not techy enough. And I use painter's tape because it doesn't tear the paper all to heck. Okay. I think that's right side up. All right, let's make sure the microphone's out of the way. And there we go. Now it still looks, yeah, it looks really weird not being colored in. So that's the benefit to the uh, uh, me doing the computer portion. And for that part, I will screen share. But let me go ahead and set up the scanner and everything first. Oh. Sorry for bumping the camera. So, so when you scan it in and, and you show it on the computer part, and please keep, keep going. I'm, not, I'm just trying to fill up dead air. Um, you'll you'll flood it with a color, right? So you can see where the floaters are at. If if I understand the process, well, that, that that that's how you determine if you have any floaters, and I'll show you that at the very end of that part. Okay, am I screen sharing? No, I'm just presenting. Okay, so let me screen share. Start screen share. Blah 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 blah. Don't need that anymore. Need that anymore? Again, if you're just joining us, this is a free pattern only to people watching this video. If you email me, at, uh, my email address should be in the uh, description of this video. Artistic underscore cowboy thirty at yahoo.com. Only people don't please don't spread the word around. Only if they've watched the video, uh, you email me at that email address saying lighthouse pattern. I will send this to you. Otherwise, it will be for sale on woodenvisions.com for probably 5 to $7 because I don't think it's all that detailed. But that's not the lighthouse I worked on Friday night. This is one I showed you that I had half done. And this is the picture it was done from. Just to give you an idea. But, uh, yeah, that's – if you email me and ask for that, that's what you will get by God. Now I'm going to go ahead and – So that's not the one that had that stain on the roof? No, that's not it, because uh, I promised everybody I would wait till next Friday to do that. Now I'm just going to real quickly. Where's my keyboard? I moved it so I wouldn't bump it. Uh, I'm going to very quickly color in the background back on this so that you get an idea of what it looked like before I got started. It was slightly different than that. But anyway, we are going to scan the thing in the scanner. Where's my scanner? There it is. Now, there are people that are curious about uh, how I do it on the computer, so that's why I'm showing this part. Uh, I purposely went 30 below zero, or whatever the word is, because I want the contrast. And I'm doing it 300 dpi because that way if you need to enlarge it, it won't distort. And it's in grayscale. 
And we wait. Does anybody have any questions whatsoever? I'm looking uh, out there. I might have missed it because I was kind of looking around. All right. Now I'm going to crop this. TJ's woodworking shop just uh, came in. Howdy, TJ. Jake Thompson says, Sweet Lighthouse. Thank Chris you. Q wants you to do an Irish accent. Uh, actually, Irish from Russian are the ones I'm terrible at. Where the heck? I didn't finish doing that border. No, I did the border around the hat, but I forgot to do the edge of the hat. So now I got to draw in the edge of the hat. See? See what you did to me, Al? Dang, actually, TJ was leaving. Oh. I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's what I forgot to do. I forgot to, uh, when I was doing that border around the hat, I stopped doing it because I was too busy babbling and doing stuff, so I'm going to have to draw that in. But let me start out by getting rid of all this scribbly stuff that we don't need. And I used the eyedropper to get the same background. This is not white. And since we changed our mind on the microphone, we're going to get rid of all that. And Al, I can't believe you let me forget to Trace the hat. Hey, Charles, don't forget to trace the hat. A little late there, Sparky. Okay, we're going to get rid of this. <laughs> um, just so y'all know this. I'll done it again. <laughs> now, uh, y'all will see shortly that this is not white. I mean, well, actually, you can see right here, that's, that's pure white. This is the off-white that we're working with, and I'll show you why I do that. That helps you find your floaters. Let me make the line with five. Five pixels wide is about how wide a pen line is. And I'm going to roughly get rid of that. And I generally do a tolerance of about 40. So that way we can just get rid of that. Even though, okay, now I cannot believe I forgot to do the edge of that dang hat. Now I got to do the color the pattern will be is this color gray and white so i'm going to connect some lines and get rid of other lines this is what i mean by cleaning up a scroll saw pattern as well as coloring it in this part will not take as long as the drawing part did so don't don't lose hope folks uh, i cannot believe i forgot to trace that so we're going to do it really quickly and roughly in the program, huh? huh you're gonna do it really quickly within the program yeah i just uh it won't be quite as smooth as a pen line but you'll just see i try to i try to keep the same thickness to suggest the edge of the hat because i forgot to do that because i was telling y'all about that border around it for stability because it will be a front work deal but i forgot to draw the actual edge of the hat looking pretty good it won't even matter because um, when you cut, that's really the defining. Um, well, yeah, but since I since I sell patterns, I got to be able to show people this kind of stuff. <laughs> well, certainly. Okay, uh, let's get a look at the source picture for when I get up around that crown there. Is it me, Lee? Is the clicky me? I don't hear a clicky. I think. I think he might just be being facetious because he gets. I think he might because he says, I hear a clicky and it's not me. <laughs> okay, right up till I get around here. Oh, yeah, that was the border. Okay, okay. Never mind. Because I remember talking about how it ran into the crown of the hat. So I'm doing it right. He says it's you, Charles. I don't hear nothing for clicks. He's so crazy. If you hear clicks, it ain't my mouse. <laughs> Ken McCrory says, it ain't me either. <laughs> okay, I got to determine where. I will not keep it this way, but I think I cut it off right about here. This is not permanent. I just don't want to draw past where I need to go. Because remember how the light. Okay, well, I'm glad I made that line because that tells me that's where. 
Okay. I'm trying to envision the shape of that brim. I'm really rough in this. I'm probably not that it matters, I guess, but uh, yeah, I, I hear the clicking too, actually, now that it, but but maybe he just psychosomatically, you know, induced it into my mind or something. <laughs> I'm getting rid of that line because I needed to stay consistent with the thickness. But now take in mind we got this light right here, so that's why I need to sort of rough that in. But I'm let me do that with a freehand tool. Or sort of free free drawing, so this won't look as pretty. It'll be kind of jagged. I'm very roughly doing this. Probably not even mandatory that I did it. I just wanted to do it to show. Yeah, that was definitely sloppy. I cannot draw with a mouse. Okay. Now, you are about to see why. Oh, never mind, I have a break in the line right there. And you're about to see. No, actually, I need to. Okay, you see how there's different shades of gray in here? We want them all to be this shade here. So, we zoom in with the eyedropper and look for one of the darkest spots. And we want that. This represents the right mouse button. This represents the left mouse button. We want this color to be that color. So, the upper color is the color we want it to be. And then we're going to use something called a color replacer. So you're replacing the darker color with that. And if you do the tolerance right, it will cover everything. So I'm doing a tolerance of 70. I'm only uh, saying all this and so it's not dead air. And so people that might care, uh, we'll, we'll find out. You'll see when I start going across it, all those gray areas are going to turn the same shade of gray. <clears throat> it's not a real distinct change unless I was going black. But you can sort of tell. Here shortly, you will know why. I scan it in without the brightness being at zero. I want there to be, I'm sweeping across it because there's, you'll see right here, the shape and size of what I'm doing with the mouse. It will only cover a certain portion. You can't just do it to the whole picture. And if you can, I don't know how. So now I'm choosing white over here. And this is where you will see why I go off contrast because white will show me the areas that are supposed to be white and if there's an area that's supposed to be cut out that is white that means there's a break in the line and that's part of my cleaning up process we got the pain uh pain tolerance <laughs> we got the tolerance at 40 i'm going to choose an area i know is white boom now you know since this is off white that it's correct this is white that means there's a break in the line there's white here and here that tells you there's a break in that line and i need to do whoops wrong color Thank God for edit undo. So I got to figure out where the breaks are in these lines. And you can zoom in to do that. No white parts there that I can see. The inside of that mouth has a break. So that's where that split in the paper was. That happens occasionally. So I just got to real sweep across those right quick. It doesn't have to be perfect because it is a, a human and uh, might as well get rid of that. That's where that cheek was. Okay, now we can color that in now that we fixed it. So any area that's off white, we know is done right. Anything that is white that shouldn't be, we know that there's a break in the line. So we can look for the break in the line on this one. And that does, didn't necessarily have to run into that, but it's okay that it did. I'm just picky. Okay, I'm looking for a break in the line. It'll probably be I don't see one yet, so it's probably below. If there's still not one, I don't know where the heck it is, but it's got to be in there somewhere. It could be. Yeah, there it is. See that little break? That little bitty break is what caused that to not color in. Ridiculous, I tell you. Now the rest of this will go quicker because the majority of this is white. Okay, so that colored in. So that that is the reason for go, doing the contrast like you do it because that's the off-white color and it, it shows up a lot better up against that white. So that is the sole purpose of me not having the contrast set to normal. 
and there's another one that I didn't even finish drawing the line. So we're going to color those two things in. And this part will go much, much quicker. Let me see if I have any more whites. I do not believe I do. No, I do that. The hat. Okay. That'll be a relatively simple break. And that's probably because I roughly did that forehead instead of doing taking my time on it. Nope, it's right there. It's where the eye, eyebrow meets the side of the head. Now, this should color in. Okay, now here's the very quick part. We're using the color replacer again. I want this off-white color. I just did with my right mouse button, and you see it go there. We want it to be gray. But since it's almost white, we're going to do a lesser tolerance than we did with that when we were using the darker color. So I do it in two stages. I do it at a tolerance of 10 and a tolerance of 30, and then it'll start to come alive right here. There's something wrong with that right eye, but you saw me trace it, so I don't know. What the heck happened there? Something doesn't look right there. I know that ear. I probably missed some detail in there. But how come every time I do one of these live shows, something doesn't look right, Al? I totally blame you. Good. Good. <laughs> but to me, that doesn't look as good as the original picture, and I don't know why. What, what did I... Because there wasn't that much, there wasn't that much here showing. It just seems like there's some shadows somewhere that I'm missing, and I don't understand. But maybe it's because there's a dang microphone there. I don't know. But something is missing somewhere, and I know I say that every time I do one of these things on a live show. Yeah, I don't think it's the microphone. I really I, don't. I don't know what it is, because that, that is really, really strange. Yeah, Mark's saw saying me? that's flipping awesome, Charles. I mean, <laughs> I, I agree with Mark. Well, thank you all. This is actually less detail than I would ordinarily go. But something about that is a little off to me, but maybe it's because I only did part of the picture. And for the sake of being consistent, I missed some of the uh, color changer and the, what you yeah. call it there? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Just lay out. Yeah, if it, if it, if it I was going to say if it was me, it is me. Uh, if I were doing this just for the heck of it, I might add more changes to it. But I don't know what to, what to change it to. Uh, because I did trace it, and y'all saw that, so that's the only saving grace I have. It's something about it doesn't look right to me. It might be because there's probably some more of his ear was showing, and I uh, and I may have forgotten to to do that. I have no idea. Well, let's let's. That is really weird. If anybody agrees with me that something looks off, I'm not going to be upset with you because I feel the same way. You know, the ears, the only thing I can see is different, but I can't see the whole, the whole yeah, on the right-hand side. Yeah, I'm trying to... No, that's too far. I think right about there. So I probably did forget part of the ear. That's probably what's going on right here. Yeah, I, I think that's... That's about where I had the edge of the paper at. Tag nab it, Al. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah. Looks, looks goto. Good. Thank you. But yeah, okay, that's the only part of me that's disappointed. There are times I do forget to trace things, like I did the edge of that uh, hat there. But uh, okay, for giggles, if you want to know how I display them online, I shrink them so they can't be quite as stolen. And, and I know I shouldn't have to worry about things being stolen, but I try to make a living at pattern sales, so forgive me. It sounds like I'm being a whiner. I need to make that bigger. Start over. Just just hold it up in front of the camera, Charles, before we're done. Hold hold what up in front of the camera? The final product. Just just hold it up against the, the camera. Like uh who was it? Brian? Who was it? That? That, sure that asked you to hold it up, and he said, "Yep, I got it screenshot already." Oh, that was when I was trying to compare the Chief Joseph thing. Yes, yes, on the on the last show, yeah, or on the last uh, uh, chat. Yeah. Now this is a just a thumbnail version, is why it's so pixelated. But uh, this is how I display my stuff here.
Other than that air, I think it turned out halfway decent, but, uh, uh, la la la. We want to change it to black from gray. Yeah, we want to do a wood grain. Whoops. And that is how I display it online. So that gives you an idea of how the process I go through when I'm when I'm doing these things. Uh, if y'all want, I can uh, I can do another one. It, probably not a willy because that took a while. But y'all are welcome to choose between these three. If y'all say no, we're good. Then that then I won't take offense to that. But I'm. Because of that air and something along with that hair is, something doesn't look right to me. But let me just go ahead and save that. Uh, get rid of that. So these are potentially future willies and three other potential ones. If nobody wants to sit through another design, we don't have to. Completely up to the viewers. But these are, these are both... Uh, Merle Haggard, this one is Waylon Jennings. But that's where we're at with that. I will stop screen sharing. Well, I can just sit here and talk. Oh, I'm not presenting anymore, am I? Okay, good. Hey, pa uh, Al, if you're still there, you don't need to stay muted because we're done with the... Uh, Okay. The thingy. Now let me see what's going on in the chat. We're still live from Charles's shop. I'm a little disappointed because every time I do one of these live things, there's something about it I don't like. <laughs> I love doing the shows, though, and I hope, even if you don't like the finished product, I think hopefully the process, y'all appreciate it. Or not say appreciate it because I, I think the viewers do appreciate it. But I hope I was able to teach something at least and knowing what I'm thinking as I'm thinking it. I saw that out. <laughs> you don't have to stay muted. You're welcome to talk. You're muted, by the way. Let okay. You know. I had my camera pointing down the whole time. <laughs> I didn't even realize it. Uh, yeah. So this is not the first time I've done a live pattern and not like the final product, but it's because on a live show, I can't take the time that I usually do to tweak it to how I like it. Uh, something about that one I did not like. But I think overall it looked like the picture and that's what, what we were going for. So hopefully a majority of the viewers will say it looked good. Not for my ego's sake, but hopefully maybe because I, I tend to beat myself up more than other people do when it comes to the quality of my designs. I don't know. Well, they they seem to like it. There's 18 likes, Charles. There's zero dislikes. Oh, well, I, wow. Watching. So oh, I, I think they liked it. I appreciate it. Uh, and real quickly, this is not mandatory by any means, but uh, if, if you would like to show to support to the channel and or just help me out, uh, there are a few ways you can do that. There is a super chat, which is the dollar sign under under where the live chat is. This is not available after a show is over, but you'll see a dollar sign where you do all your typing. That's called a super chat. Or you can go to Patreon and get re get rewarded back. Uh Patreon, uh, that these are all in the description, uh, these links. There's also, you can get a scroll on t-shirt where it's just text or, or, uh, or a picture of me pointing and saying scroll on. And I believe that was everything. Uh, those are available on my website, woodenvisions.com, but all of these links are available in the description. There is not mandatory to help me out. I just throw it out there because every little, every little bit helps, but it's never mandatory. And, but obviously if and when people do it, it is appreciated. And people say, well, if it's not mandatory. Why do you bring it up every show? And I've actually had people tell me that. It's because if, if people didn't know about it and want to help, then that's why it's there. It's not a, uh, I'm not intentionally trying to beg. <laughs> help me. I'm kidding. Is there uh, anything happening in the chat there, uh, Al? Mark Lindsay is saying, hey, you can hit Charles's website and buy a ton of patterns. They're awesome. Thanks, Mark. I'm sure that's what Charles is going to say. 
my god I, yeah that's what i was gonna say <laughs> and i'm a little tickled because today i i spent money i didn't have but i needed a heater for my shop it's it's the radiator style heater but i'm hoping it'll work because i can't do anything in the main part of the portion of the shop is so bloody cold i have a little space heater right here next to me in the shop or the office so that works but uh i'm not one of these people that uh has a patreon and a uh, super chat and t-shirts trying to make money for because some people will tell you i uh your donations help me do this show uh no your donations help me period <laughs> <laughs> that sounded pathetic but i'm being honest about what the money would be used for they help me they help me day to day because uh i don't want to get into a sob story but yeah uh, i'd be lying if i said i was going to buy a better camera with it or if i was going to buy better lighting because i have decent lighting and decent camera that gets me by and you can do a YouTube video with a phone. So I don't want to lie to people to say, uh, I can't do better projects until you pay me because it's not like that. Uh, it's strictly if you want to show support to the channel and this and that. But the Patreon thing, I try to give back. That's why I bring that up because it has kind of a reward system. More so aimed at scrollers, but there are rewards for people that are not scroll sawyers. So those, that's why those are mentioned. The t-shirts, by selling them, uh, it helps me out, obviously, but I also, I design the ones that just say scroll on, not without the picture of me on it, for people that, because I think any Charles Sawyer can wear that, and it doesn't have to be aimed back to Charles Deering, you know, it's just a, a scroll saw, scroll sawyer friendly t-shirt, and I think it, it could do well. I'm going to try to think of other ones that any scroller can wear, whether they like me or not. I mean, <laughs> but... <laughs> So, or, well, I'm, I'm not getting the connection. Are you wanting to a scroll saw picture of you? Doing no, that? no, no. I was just trying to be funny. <laughs> I, was, I was just trying to be funny. So I hope that explains to some people about asking why I always bring up these ways to help out or support the channel if they so, so choose. I will not lie to anybody for any kind of charity. I, I, I'm truthful about everything I do. It does help, but... I can't say you'll get better quality videos from me unless I branch outside of scroll sawing. Yeah, Mark said he bought a pattern this morning and he's still browsing. And he says a pro tip is patterns are great for CNC too. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Yeah, Mark, Mark, Mark bought the, uh, uh, the, uh, damn it. I knew it. To, oh, the Harley Quinn pattern this morning. Yeah. And he's doing a CNC project with it for his daughter, I believe. Yeah, and you, you did do that one live. It was that that was the nine hour. That, uh, well, uh, it was one show that was an hour and a half to two hours, and then it was uh, then it was seven hours forty something minutes, and that's this one here. Yeah, yeah. Just the one that took so bloody long. But yes, I still have not given it to my sister in law because it's been so cold. I need to back. I need to back it and sand it and all kinds of stuff. But Charles, do you ever maybe? I mean, could you scroll something and then, for instance, box it off or something? You know, I've uh, seen I, I, certain certain crafters, certain makers do that. They're, they'll they'll make a product and then they'll auction it right there, and whoever wants it can can have it. Uh, I could do that, but unfortunately, the ones I've chosen thus far were. For somebody already I mean I started that skull one around Halloween never yeah. did finish that one but yeah that yeah technically I can do that but uh, and there's no way to sound say this without sounding ungrateful because I've tried auctions in the past and they didn't do well and it's not necessarily for my benefit I mean auctions in general haven't seen at least when I've done them they didn't seem to do well but I mean that's not to say it'll never happen but I got also got to find out if auctions I just wondered, and and uh, Steve French just gave a super chat of five dollars. Thank you so much, Steve. I appreciate that. And Steve, I hope you're doing well. I haven't got to talk to you in forever. And uh, I also need to check the YouTube rules. Is auctioning allowed on YouTube? Now I saw this on Twitch, so perhaps, <coughs> perhaps not. I should say. Yeah, I, I ran into the same thing on Facebook uh, when I was trying to auction a piece off there. I actually have a an auctioning page on on a. Uh, Facebook, but it never got any. It got a little bit of a following, but never nobody ever <laughs> responded to the auction, so I just stopped doing it. And that's not a complaint; it's just why I stopped doing that. But 
Right. Well, I just wondered. But yeah, I mean, it, it's an idea. I mean, if I could stop doing these gigantic artsy fartsy pictures, then we might have luck with auctions. <laughs> that's, that's on me. <laughs> I mean, I started that skull on Halloween. I need to. Uh, I need to finish that skull. Maybe I can auction that off. Uh, totally forgot what I was going to say. Uh, yeah, I've said before that this, this channel is for the viewers. I mean, yes, I have fun doing what I'm doing, but I noticed a lot of shows were doing interviews. And uh, when I do these live projects versus interviews, I tend to get two or three hundred more views than I do from doing interview shows. And I figured since there's other people doing interview shows, uh, they could probably get away with keep keep doing that and I could be trying something different. So if there's something you'd like to be to see being done on this channel, even if you're seeing this this video not live like weeks or months down the road, tell me what you'd like to see and I will keep it in mind because I want the viewers to to like what they're seeing. That's why I try to do these things live. I do need to get back to project videos just to have content out there, but by the way, Mark Lindsay also made a comment. I think it's a really good comment. He says, I don't know if it's allowed on YouTube or not, but you can link a YouTube video to an eBay listing. Uh, and I, that would, you know, open it up to more people, you know, than, than just, you know, what, 20 or 30 that, that are there online. And it'd be up for a, a long period of time or a longer period of time. Yeah. The problem with that is, I mean, I'm not, it sounds like I'm making excuses, but I actually owe eBay money. Oh, God, it, Charles, I want you to auction one off, man. <laughs> I, I, I will. I just got to find out if it's legal to do on or legal, yeah. you know, allowed on yeah, YouTube yeah, yeah. because because I owe money. eBay money from listing stuff and it not selling, and I listed almost everything I had, and so I owe them money. I've tried Craigslist, blah blah blah. I've tried Etsy, and I'm not whining. I'm just stating fact. I mean, it was hope it doesn't sound like I'm whining. Uh, but just, I, just some ideas, just some think tank ideas. Yeah, and I don't, I don't have to have a hundred thousand subscribers. I, I like where I'm at. I like it. <laughs> what? <laughs> Lee Knighton says, "Set phasers to stun out." <laughs> <laughs> oh hell! Uh, I love, I love that so many people. It's an average of twenty to thirty people that watch per show, and that that means a lot to me. I mean, some are better than others, and I, I don't always pick the right. Thing to do on the show but i do appreciate each and every view and each and every live viewer chatter i appreciate comments i mean uh this channel is for y'all although it's me doing stuff i still want to do what y'all want to see but otherwise it sort of defeats the purpose as far as entertainment value or teaching and i hope if even if you just learned one or two things tonight or today i'm sorry i'm used to doing this at night i hope that made it worth it to you to watch <laughs> okay. yeah, there goes the stunner <laughs> or phaser or taser i don't know what the heck it's called but uh it's a I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and shut it down even though we still have 18 viewers because i don't want to bore the crap out of people but i appreciate y'all watching i hope y'all learned something uh this video will stay up so if you have any questions after you've seen it uh feel free to comment and i will respond to it but i appreciate it Appreciate, yeah, appreciate you being here, Al. Uh, Y'all don't forget Lee Nyden's show. Uh, it's later tonight. He's posted in a few pages. If I see it, I, I think I'm supposed to be on the panel tonight. I could be wrong, but it's about how to. Uh, no, he asked me. You're not going to be on the panel anymore. Girl. Okay. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the show is going to be about starting a chapter uh, for your state. Uh, or that's your location. I about that's that's pretty cool. I'm a member of Saw also, and as yeah, I am as well. I'm a member, but uh, due due to my disability, I don't get out of the house a lot, and that's what it it would require doing that to have a successful chapter. Uh, but anyways, I appreciate all y'all watching. Uh, as as usual, you will know how no matter how old this video is, if you want to see it, uh, content that I'm not doing, but. Please don't be facetious about it. It has to be something I'm capable of doing. But especially if it's scroll saw pattern or cutting related and you have any questions or things you'd like to see on the show, let me know because I do care about what y'all want to see. Thank you for being here, Al. Thank you for everybody in the chat watching. And uh, I will see y'all next time. And uh, uh, real quickly, 
if you want to not find out too late about something I'm doing like this, this was a last minute decision, like within 20 minutes of doing the show, all you gotta do is go to my profile on YouTube uh, and click on the bell. It will notify you of anything I do if you, if you choose to be notified about everything on this channel. But thanks again for everybody being here. I had a blast and I'm not 100% happy with the results, but you saw what I did and hopefully you learned something. I still need to learn some stuff. And by God, don't forget to check out Lee's show tonight, uh, Russ Clarity's show Saturday nights if he's still doing it. Meaning, you know, you know, sometimes life gets in the way. I know he still has a show. He also does a Twitch show. And Eloy Escajedo does a Twitch show. That's E-S-C-A-G-E-D-O. Look that up on YouTube. And uh, I believe uh, Portal Woodworks, his band sawbox challenge end, ended yesterday. So keep a watch out for that. Watch pay, uh, uh, Never mind. I'm just trying to say too much. But thank you, everybody, for watching. <laughs> Somebody shut me up. Thank you all so much for watching. And uh, it really means a lot. And I appreciate your support and Good following. Night. And live long and prosper. And by God, if nothing else, sure along.